Welcome to Pass It On, our family Christmas program this year at Roseville Lutheran Church. We are so glad you are watching, and we pray this program brings you joy and hope this Christmas season. Let's finish up this checklist to see if we have everything we... We have everything. Angel, check. Wise men, check. Check and check. Mary and Jesus, check and check. Let's see, do we have sheep? Flocks of sheep, wow. I think we've covered everything. We have all the pieces. Then we are ready to tell our Christmas story. Uh-oh. There's just one small problem. There's always one small problem with the Christmas story. No, not always. But this year there is. What's the problem? The problem is we don't actually have any of the things we need to tell the story this year. What do you mean? We went through our entire checklist. We said check to everything on the list. We even said check to the innkeeper and a donkey. What is the problem? The problem is... We don't actually have any of those. What do you mean we don't have all the pieces? Wait, you went through the entire checklist and said, check to everything on it. But we didn't actually check to see if everything was it. Oh. Oh. This isn't a small problem. This is a huge problem, a ginormous problem. We always have a ginormous problem. Stop! Don't go there. What happened to all the characters? We had Mary and Joseph from last year's Christmas story. I remember some animals and a handful of angels. So where did they go? They're probably somewhere in a box downstairs. We have a lot of stuff down there. Maybe we sold them at the garage sale last summer. You made a lot of money at that garage sale. Wait a second, are you looking for all the kids that tell the Christmas story at church every December? Yes, have you seen them? Well, not exactly. What does that mean? I've seen one or two of them, but we haven't been able to spend as much time together as we usually do. Oh yeah, it's been a rough year for all of us. And you're sure the kids aren't in a box in the basement? We're sure! So now what? How do we tell the Christmas story when we can't get everyone together right now? I didn't think it was odd that no one showed up for any rehearsals. Did we even have rehearsals? I don't remember. That wasn't odd. We didn't have any rehearsals. Oh, right. It's been a long year. We should think of a way to tell the Christmas story anyway. I agree. It seems even more important to tell it now where everyone has been through hard times. I agree, too. It's something that can bring everyone together, even if we can't actually get together the way we usually do. Exactly. So what are we going to do? I know. We could text it to everyone. I don't think my thumbs can type that much. What if we send some emails? That could work, but it does seem a little boring. And it won't have the same feeling as when we tell the Christmas story. There is something special about seeing kids sharing the news of Jesus' birth. And then getting to sing some Christmas carols together. That's my favorite part. I could check the boxes in the basement. Maybe there is something down, something down there that could help us. This is all I found in the basement boxes. Tangled Christmas lights and small clothes. I don't think mm. Tangled Christmas lights are going to do it. That's pretty much it for the basement boxes. Unless you want to do something with spiders. With spiders? Oh, why don't we just take the year off? Oh, we could have an extra nap instead. We have to do something. Mary and Joseph didn't give up and take an extra nap when it comes out. Stay. That's true, they kept looking, and even though the stable wasn't that they had in mind, it still worked. Let's put on our thinking caps on and figure it out. So you're saying that we don't have to do a Christmas program with a hundred kids singing? Which is perfect, because a hundred singing kids wasn't even on the checklist. I must have forgotten to write it down. There might be some kids in the basement boxes next to the spiders. So I'll go check. I think the most important thing is that we pass on the Christmas story. After all, the story has been passed on for hundreds and hundreds of years. So happy times? 
and times with lots of problems. And it's an important reminder of God's love every time. Exactly! exactly. I didn't find any kids, but I found this, baby Jesus. And that gives me a terrific idea. Let's pass around the nativity. Pass around the nativity? Why don't we tell the Christmas story? I think I get it. As we share the nativity pieces, we can share the nativity story. And as we pass along a piece to the next person, we can remember that God's love connects us no matter what. Not to jinx it, but this might be our best Christmas story ever. I agree. I can't wait to see this. This is going to be fun. The Christmas yeah. story from the book of Luke, chapter 2, in the Bible. Pass it on. Yeah! In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that the census should be taken over the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinus was the governor of Syria and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were, while they were there, the time came for the baby to be born and she gave birth to her firstborn a son. He wrapped him, he wrapped him in cloth and put him in the manger because there were no room. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby to keep watch over their sheep by night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you great new, good news that will cause great joy for all people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see the thing that has happened, that the, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all he seen and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things they heard, had heard and seen, which were lost as they had been told. Now from Isaiah 9, verse 6. For to us a child is born. To us a son is given. And the definite beyond his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor. Mighty God. Everlasting Mighty Father. Prince of Peace.
glad we didn't give up. This was a perfect idea. It's also a terrific reminder of how we can live every day. By passing around nativity figures? Go figure. No, by passing on God's love. We pass it on every time we do something kind for someone else or when we share the good news of Jesus' birth with others. For God so loved the world that he gave okay. his only son. Go pass, pass it, it on. on. Pass it on. That was fun. We didn't even have to have rehearsal this year. But we got a great message just the same. Passing on God's love. Can we have dessert now? Like digging in those cookies we baked? I suppose that hasn't changed this year. Pass it on! Oh, there we go. Look, what do you think, Squiggles? Does it help you remember the Christmas story? Oh, yeah, I love looking at Mary and Joseph and Jesus in the manger and remembering how God sent us Jesus so we would know that God loves us no matter what. Oh. Uh, uh, um. What are you doing? What are you talking about? I think I have some homework to do. What, what about my nativity? That's great. Maybe a little dusty. I'll go get a dust cloth. Uh, freeze! Squiggles. There's a fishing bobber for baby Jesus. And a hand sanitizer for a wise man. Uh, why did you take those figures? We wanted to, we wanted to pass them on to remind everyone that God loves them as much as always. I also wanted to see if you noticed. You did. I guess we'll have to talk about some other ways to pass on God's love to other squiggles. Hmm, what could the girls do? Uh, they could send someone a card. We could, we could sing Christmas carols. Hmm. Give hugs and kisses to the people we love. Uh, when we're out and about, we could hold the door open for other people. That always shows people that God loves them, right? Um, reading the Christmas story. That always helps me remember how much God loves me. And if I share that story with others, they would know. Oh, Squiggles, I can't wait to hear what everyone else does to share God's love with others. Merry Christmas! Please join us in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory for never and ever. Amen. Amen. And now the blessing. May you be filled with the wonder of Mary, the obedience of Joseph, the joy of the angels, uh, the eagerness of the shepherds, the determination of the magic, the peace of the Christ child. May the Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Thank you for watching this year's family Christmas program. May you and your family have a wonderful Christmas. Remembering the most important part is the birth of Jesus. Merry Christmas, everyone, and pass it on!